Hi everyone, we are back with Research and Publication Ethics series. In the fourth lecture, we are discussing on to open access publishing. We need to know what is open access, what are the different types of open access, what is its importance, what are the different terms associated with open access. So let's learn this step by step, easily understand, it's a very easy topic, but you need to have a clarity as to what exactly are the various types of open access etc. So let's peacefully understand this in the coming. Okay, so let's understand what is open access. By open access we actually mean the content or information is freely available. Freely available means that it is freely available online in digital sources that information you can easily access without or with reduced copyright and licensing barriers so the traditional published works will have their own restrictions in the form of copyright and licensing issues for both the users as well as the authors. But when it comes to open access, these restrictions would be removed to some extent or totally removed. Even though the papers are open access, such papers pass through a well-established peer review process and they do maintain high publishing standards. It's not that they are free so therefore they are cheap. No, they are of good quality. They have passed through peer review process and the publishing standards. Here the girl is running, talking about open access as publications, publications for free and without any kind of barriers. So this is what in a simple term, what is open access. Okay, so here the mother tree is t telling that and they make those papers so expensive, almost nobody can even read them. So this is a criticism against a traditional su uh, subscription based articles. Uh, where uh, the trees are cut, papers are used to generate uh, articles but these articles are again very expensive that a normal author or a sorry normal reader cannot access the same without making huge amount of payment. So that is why the mother tree is actually criticizing with respect to this. So this was a condition that the research world actually faced. Okay. Before we understand what is open access, we need to have a knowledge regarding the versions of manuscript. This will help you to clearly understand which all articles or at what process or stage they are made open access. The first is preprint or author's original manuscript. Preprint or author's original manuscript, as the name suggests, it's preprint. It's actually before peer review. Manuscript version before peer review is preprint. Now here the thing is that this version of the journal article is considered by the author to be of sufficient quality. That is the author says that this particular article is sufficient, is of good quality enough to be submitted to an article to a journal for peer review. At that stage before peer review it is called a preprint or author's original manuscript. Okay, let's get into what is postprint. Postprint is a manuscript which is accepted after the peer review process is done. But what happens is it is not at an article to be included in the journal because only the peer review process is done, it's yet to be edited, further review, etc. Then we move to accepted manuscript. What is accepted manuscript? It is after pre peer review, which means it has become uh, uh, reached to the stage of postprint. And then it is revised also, and now it is accepted for publication by the journal editor. Finally, you have version of record. Version of record is once the postprint that is accepted after peer review, accepted manuscript that is it is revised and accepted for publication also. Now this particular accepted manuscript gets an identity that it is something worthy to be read, cited and you can consider it as an article good enough and it gets allocated a DOI then that becomes a version of record. So it is the final, definitive, citable version of the paper. It's copy edited, typeset, had metadata applied and it's allocated a DOI. That is the final thing that we actually see in the various journals that we refer to. Now let's get into open access. So you can either have closed access or you can have open access. In open access itself, different types are there. Gold open access, hybrid open access, or green open access. It's just the basic ones, but we have many more types of open access, which we will discuss in the later slide. The first, that is gold open access. What we have to understand when we go through the different types of open access is 
you have to check into two important points. One is article publishing charge. What is the condition with respect to that? Second, with respect to copyright issue, what is the condition? So these, if you clearly distinct, if you are able to clearly understand and distinguish from the rest, then it is easy to remember the various open access journals or types. The first is gold open access which means it is published in an open access journal and you go to that open access journal's website or publisher's website you can access that particular article. Example for that is public library of science or biomed central where they have their own policies various uh, journals are there you all of those journals are open access you can get the articles from there and this is how it functions gold open access here article publishing charges often applicable so what is an apc article publishing charge is nothing but a charge is paid by the author to the publisher to make his article an open access one which means the payment is not done by the uh, the reader but it is done by the author and author retains copyright to the work it is he who is going to decide who else will be allowed to use that particular work etc Next, we move on to green open access. Green open access is like we have already published a work. Now that has come in a subscription based journal also. Now what we decide is anyway, people have used it after payment. Now let me think of putting it into a repository so that it will be available for free public use. So it's a self archiving that I'm doing. My accepted manuscript, which will be after the peer review, we are putting that into repositories and uh, uh, that will be made available to the public. So initially it is not open access, so it follows an embargo period, a time period for which it will be subscription based, after which it is actually transformed into a kind of open access. So it enables you to share the article and comply with most funder mandates. You need not pay an APC because it's like repositories means institutions are maintaining the same. So you just give access to that institution or you are giving your article to there and uh, whoever has access to that repository, they will be able to get this. You actually assign a copyright to the publisher as in the traditional manner itself. That is green open access. So it's self archiving. Hybrid journal. Hybrid journal is basically a combo. You have subscription based plus open access. Which means in a subscription based journal, you have certain articles which are on payment basis, certain which are open access. So it's basically an open access option is given to the articles in a subscription based, fundamentally subscription based journal. So authors can decide whether they need to make their articles open access or not, for which they'll have to make a payment, which will be the article processing charges. Next we have diamond open access. In diamond open access is an immediate open access publication by the journal or book publisher. And they do not charge any publication fees or access charges are not there for the readers. Access charges not for the readers, publication fees not for the authors. Copyright can be retained by the author. There are certain permission barriers to share and reuse and such permission barriers would be removed in case of diamond open access. So it's an immediate open access publication by the journal or book. Next is bronze open access. What makes bronze open access? That bronze word itself indicates some kind of a celebration. So it's a celebration time for you as part of a promotion or some time, something uh, for promotion for some time, you are making a particular article or journal open access. So what happens is the content will be free to read or download on the publisher's website. Situations, it can be the particular journals 50th issue or it can be that particular author's 50th article such kind of anything where you can add in some kind of uh, or it may be based on the number of citations n number of citations are received because of that the author decides uh, let me put that open uh, for open access for some time so it will be for the as part of promotion for some time alone this particular article is made in as open access the content is free to read and download on the publisher's website and not published under an open license that permits sharing or reuse. So it's not open access in a way, but it will come under this category because it's maintained as open access for some time period. Publisher can withdraw the access anytime. Okay. They are unlicensed papers located on the publisher's website. Here we move as a briefing on how to do the publishing part. There is a researcher who decides where to publish. 
either she can publish in an open access journal or can publish in a subscription based journal she decides to go for open access journal she pays article processing charges or article publishing charges apc if required and that is a gold open access route immediate open access via the publisher itself second possibility she can publish in a subscription based journal so she searches for an open access repository and she is doing a self archiving in that repository then that becomes a green open access route so it can be either immediate or delayed open access that depends on the publisher's policy so you move to a repository and there after a certain embargo period you are deciding to put that into an open access form lastly you have hybrid journal which can be both subscription based as well as open access both are there that becomes hybrid journal now this hybrid journal you got to pay article processing charges if required apc has to be paid once you pay this apc it will become immediate open access via the publisher so but that in journal will have both paid as well as open access articles now before she do this she'll check into some kind of a referencing called sherpa romeo which we'll discuss in the later slide moving to few more types of open access we'll just have a glance through this gratis open access here some copyright and licensing restrictions will apply and information is available free of charge libre open access information again is free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions so in gratis open access we have few restrictions still it will apply but in libre open access it's like liberated from everything from free of cost and free of copyright and licensing restriction there comes black open access what does that do black open access every time black is illegal so it is like it's not that it is openly licensed and reuse rights have been granted but what happens is these are illegal websites that allow you access to subscription based journals we can say or articles we can say so it's shared online illegally the best example is for that is sihub so it's black open access it's given to you free of course but is illegally done now the question arises who pays for open access the payment comes from is it the reader or the author the question is that the answer is it's the author because the author wants more citations the author want more publicity for his article so what does he do he makes some payment to the journal which is an open access one so that more visibility is there more views and readers are there a book processing charge or article processing charges will be fees levied on the authors their institutions or funding bodies to make that particular article or book an open access one it's also known as author side fees here we can just understand the actual real, the actual uh, fees that is being charged in wiley or uh, taylor and francis and all uh, what is the charge they are keeping for open access this apc the amounts like three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars it varies between different journals based on their rankings and ratings so it's that uh, much amount has to be paid to make it an open access one few more topics related to open access is one is directory of open access journals what is that it's basically a online directory which consists of 10500 journals which are open access from 122 countries in 74 languages covering over 300 subjects basically it's a repository of all the open access journals where they are listed from that list you can access these open access journals what is doaj do is that it's indexing in the doaj is free as well as accessing that particular list is also free and it provides you access to high quality open access peer reviewed journals every data that's available in doaj is free the journals they are they can go and index there so that they will be getting more visibility and uh, reputation is also increasing so from around the world any journal that is open access you can once it is listed in doaj you can easily get it from here now how does doaj makes an impact the first it helps publishers to serve the authors better second it helps publishers to adopt best practice they make their journals more attractive once it is getting into this particular list more people will be knowing about the journal and that gives benefit to the authors also 
and it is operating globally via a lot number of ambassadors and volunteers to maintain this particular DOAJ and indexing DOJ, DOAJ increases the traffic in journal sites, the visibility, readability increases. So those are the benefits that is associated with directory of open access. Finally, Sherpa Romeo. Sherpa Romeo is an online resource. What does it do? It aggregates and analyzes publisher open access policies from around the world. It is trying to bring down which are the open access policies. All these are getting aggregated and analyzed in Sherpa Romeo, which is done by a group of a specialist. So it reviewed and analyzed by the specialist team and they provide summaries on a journal by journal basis. Okay. And these summaries you can read what are it related to it is related to the publisher copyright and open access archiving policies. It talks about the self archiving permissions and conditions of rights which is given to the authors. So you can read through the same you get an idea. Before we saw a picture wherein the author decides whether I should go to open access or subscription based or hybrid one. So in that case she will first read into the Sherpa Romeo so as to know which are the open access policies from around the world like what, what does each of the journals follow. So once she get an idea she will be it will be easy for her to decide which journal she has to depend to. So this is all about Sherpa Romeo. Finally these are the and with that we are ending up open access. Hope you have clearly understood what is open access which are the different types of open access. Have a little knowledge on the various versions of manuscript article processing charges, DOAJ and Sherpa Romeo. Thanks for today. We'll be coming up with more lectures in the next week.